So, hello to everyone. I hope you are fine. My name is Gabriela, and today I will present to you my work with Professor Pedro Romano, Tiro, Head Morphology Variation of Crassicornis Complexes Cryptic Species, Explore Through Geometric and Morphometric Methods. And to start, I will make a Brief introduction, starting with the question, who are the stream genies? And stream genies is a worldwide distributed and hyperdiverse end genus. And as we can see here, they just don't support low temperatures. They predominantly inhabit the litter and topsoil of tropical forests, and being the main predators of springtails and other soft body insects. They are represented by more than 850 valley species, and these ants show a high morphological variation among their species, uh, counting on a range of many blur types, which leads to a consequent morphological variation in the head capsule morphology as represented here in this video that I took from the supplementary materials of work published by Buher et al. this year. And in 2000, an angel called Barry Bodom <laughs> completely revised the genus in this book, separated it into many, 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 many small um, groups often restricted to a single biogeographic region. Here, uh, these groups is restricted to the neotropics, and they contain an extremely similar species. One of these groups, the Gundelash group, is divided into two complexes. The Gundelash complex, um, here represented by <laughs> The type of Stromigenes gundelash, you know, my God. I use the species that give the group its name to exemplify. I'm so creative. And, and the other group, the other complex is the Crassicornis, formed by 10 species Aetigenes, Altidens, Brevicornis, Crassicornis, Crementa, Etopia, Millorhafa, Pazisops. The notes and the tech. And this complex represent a poorly understood delimitation with several identification errors due to the overwhelming domain of taxonomic methods of visual inspection. And they have a very similar morphology, like uh, we can see here. Thus, in this work, we use geometric and morphometric methods to explore size and shape variation within the classicornis complex of species. And for this, we examined heads in frontal view of 46 works of 12 species of stromigenes belonging to the complexes and more to uh, and we had two morph species, sp1 and sp2. The images were gathered from the antweb, and images of the two potentially new species that I said uh, was gathered from Julius Shaw collection and included in a preliminary analysis. We use the PASS program and the TPS software series in our analysis and plotted nine landmarks at homologous points of greatest variation in the shape of the head. And we use only half the shape of the head, given the bilateral symmetry, aiming to reduce, reduce digitizing errors. The central size of the configuration was used as a proxy to size and the landmarks 
were superimposed via generalized Procrustes analysis and used as shape variables. Therefore, we translated, rotated, and rescaled the images in addition to calculated the average distance between all nine landmarks, uh, or we can say the central size. <laughs> and first, we do a PCA, a principal component analysis, which analyzes shapes separately from the allometric effect, the size effect. And we could not find a clear pattern of variation in non-allometric components. And since the shape by itself was by itself was not a good uh, descriptor of the variation in the analyzed species, we started to analyze between size and shape. And this regression between size and PC1, the main component that explains the great variation of shape, we can see a clear correlation between our variables. So an allometric effect could be identified in preliminary ordination analysis and account for most of the variance. Therefore, we explored shape variation through, through common allometric analysis, and the allometric component revealed a clear structure in the morpher space. And in this chart, we see a subdivision that explains the variation between uh, the positive and negative scores. The negative scores uh, groups the species Metopia, Aetigenes, Octidens, Brevicornis, Crassicornis, SP1, Zetec, and Stenops. And the morphology of these species could be associated with allometry and is characterized by an expansion of the vertex region, um, contraction of the frontal carina, lateral expansion of the frontal lobe, and the expansion of the posterior apex of the clipus. Uh, the species plotted in the opposite morphospace, the positive scores include Stromgenes clementa, Milohafa, sp2, and Pazisops, which show a contraction here in the vertex region, uh, lateral expansion in the frontal carina, a uh, contraction of the frontal lobe and a slightly, slightly expansion of the anterior apex of the clipus, which is interpreted as a consequence of size increase or allometry. And here we can see a comparison between the two allometric effects found, the negative and the positive scores. So, uh, preliminary analysis of head geometry allows us to conclude that the allometric effect stands out and seems to be associated even partially with the taxonomy of the group. And we expect to incorporate same landmarks in more species and specimens simply in future, future analysis. And GMM was revealed to be a promising toolkit to explore the morphology variation in cryptic species. And we thank Julio Chau for sharing his knowledge about Sturmigenes taxonomy and for providing photographies of the potential morph species and the class of the discipline, Ben 612, for support and sharing ideas. This work was supported by the coordination for the Academic Excellence Program, ProEx CAPS of Brazil. And I think it's that.